Welcome to Inner Mongolia. Every day in Inner Mongolia was adventurous and every day was a good day. In just five days, we traveled over 2,000 kilometers here in Inner Mongolia. Okay, I've got to tell you, it feels like it was two weeks, but in <laughs> fact, it was only five days because we packed a lot in, we met so many people, and we had a lot of surprises. Sharing a 4,000 to 200 kilometer borderline with Mongolia and Russia, Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region stretches across the northern edge of China for 1.18 million square kilometers, or about 12.3% of the country's terrestrial territory. This immense expanse of land is home to more than 24 million people, rich landscapes, and abundant fauna and flora. At the tail end of this summer, a prime time to experience Inner Mongolia, we rode horses across grasslands, hiked up mountains, and wandered through villages to soak up the excitement and development of this dynamic region. Established in 1947, Inner Mongolia is actually the first of provincial level autonomous region for ethnic minorities in China. So I think a taste of the local culture is a must if you come here. Well, I did have a taste of the local culture. I did squeeze into a local costume and it was fun. You're okay. For me, the memory of horse riding will last forever. Inner Mongolia is one of the most ethnically diverse regions in China. In fact, 55 of the country's 56 ethnic groups can be found here. And coexistence is almost woven into the cultural fabric of this region. Statistics show that about one-eighth of all families in Inner Mongolia are multi-ethnic. Of the region's residents, more than 4.2 million identify as ethnic Mongolian, accounting for the prominence of their culture across the region. I've always wanted to try horseback riding here in Inner Mongolia. Well, this is the perfect place to do it because Inner Mongolia is famous for its vast grasslands and Mongolian horses like these. A trip here without getting in the saddle is like going to the ocean without a dip into the water. <laughs> Very well said, exactly. So how do you feel being on your horse? A bit nervous, but excited. You know, because of their intrinsic bond to horses, Mongolian ethnic group is often called the ethnic group on horseback. Well, that connection is true. I mean, the way I see it, the horses represent the spirit of Inner Mongolia. The people are strong, tough, daring, diligent, and they're welcoming, and they have a close bond with nature. Yes. Wow. wow, so beautiful. Thank you. I love your costume too, actually. Thanks. A typical Mongolian outfit consists of a hat, a deal, a type of long coat, boots, and accessories. Now suited and booted, so to speak, we were ready for our next experience, food. Hi. Hi, ni hao. Thank you, thank you. Uh, 跟我们说说这都是什么吃的? 我给你介绍一下, 这是咱们那个草原上的风干牛肉干, 这是乌日墨, 这是果条, 这是奶糖, 都是用那个牛奶做的, 我给你们倒点茶, 好的,你也提看。it's quite different from the sweet bubble tea we normally had. Yes. This is made of local tea milk and mm. some salt. Mm. And uh, it's very hot, but it's nice. Okay, it's great. Try some of the snacks here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, speaking of nature, we found a place where local people saved nature and created a hidden spectacular oasis. Great, and for me, I am amazed at the diversity of the landscape and also the rich resources. 
What's even more amazing, local people, they don't take it for granted. They are finding the best way to live in harmony with nature. It used to be a deserted place with only sand and stone, but through mm -hmm. transformation, it has transformed into a recreational resort that has been favored by local people. It took some vision, but more than vision, it took hard work. Look at the water, look at the sunshine. Check out the beaches. And more than 2,000, actually 200,000 people have visited here. Mm. And also, uh, it adds tons of jobs for local people. Yep. So the transformation has changed their lives. Great job. Let's relax. Shenzhen Wan is a perfect example of how trash can be turned into treasure. Little more than three years ago, this place was barren and grim. That all changed in May 2019, when the whole area was given an enormous facelift. The environment cleaned up, water improved, and supporting infrastructure put in. Today, Shenzhen Wan is enjoying a new lease on life. And this restoration project is just one of countless across Inner Mongolia, showing how the region has been prioritizing ecological conservation and pursuing green development, and taking the lead in making China's northern border areas into a more beautiful place. Inner Mongolia is best known for its grassland, but actually the region has varied natural landscapes from prairies to forests, from mountains to lakes, from wetlands to deserts. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, the region spans so wide along China's northern border. It's the country's important ecological barrier. A lot of greening efforts have been made over the decades to protect the environment, the nature here. <laughs> right, building a green Great Wall along the northern border. Exactly, how do you feel now? Well, I feel very close to nature, the water and the lush green trees. It's Arshan National Forest Park, home to well-preserved forests, volcanic landforms, and mountaintop lakes. A lot to see. Mm -hmm. More to discover. Unsurprisingly, we aren't the only ones to enjoy Arshan National Forest Park. In 2021, Arshan City, where the park locates, recorded over 2.2 million tourist visits and tourism revenue exceeded 3.2 billion yuan. This demonstrates that lucid waters and lush mountains are invaluable assets. But such natural treasures do not come easy. They are the result of persistent protection actions over the years. Most notably, a logging ban in the area's state-owned forests since 2012 inspired thousands of loggers to lay down their axes to protect the trees they once felled. Across the whole region, Inner Mongolia has adopted a holistic approach to conserving its mountains, rivers, forests, farmlands, lakes, grasslands, and deserts, and the results are phenomenal. Over the past decade, about 8.13 million hectares of forests and 19 million hectares of grass have been planted across the region. Grassland vegetation coverage and forest coverage increased from 40.3% and 20.8% to 45% and 23% respectively. And as desertified area and sandy land continued to decrease, the number of sandstorms fell sharply from 4.9 days to 0.6 days per year. You know, I remember the first day when we arrived and we were walking in the great field and we ran into a guy and his wife and they were so friendly. They invited us to their home. They shared wine, smiles, and stories. Great, and for me, I remember this training center for embroidery. You know, behind that local, delicate craftsmanship, I saw passion, I saw hard work, and better lives, 
Sylvia, it feels so good to be out in nature. You can smell it, you can feel it, you can see it, and we're in the middle of all these grapes, the vineyards. Right, and you see, they look actually quite small. Mm -hmm. You know, much smaller than the usual ones that we see because they're only for wine making. Ah. I it's see. the local industry. Mm. Can I try one? Uh, I, I won't stop you. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Must be very, very nice. It's very sour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they only ripen around Mid Autumn Festival. Okay. So the line is don't eat the fruit until it's ripe. <laughs> yeah. Nestled at the foot of a horse saddle like mountain. Manshan is a small, sweet village, blessed with agreeable weather and idyllic scenery. Amid China's rural revitalization drive, it is tapping into its local advantages, like rural tourism and grape cultivation, to boost development. Today, it is home to over 233 hectares of vineyards, and the fruit is helping to sweeten the lives of the local people. Hey, ni hao. Hey, we can try some wine at his house. <笑>现在的生活我觉得比就是过去那比说是强一百套因为啥呢就现在这就是国家的政策党的政策特别咱们老百姓种地还有养虎你像农民呢还有这个养老金这些等等的方面吧种葡萄他的那个啥呢收入
就是我，我拿这个针，嗯嗯，就是坐这。OK。Have a seat. I cannot imagine in a month she would be able to do this. She's a quick learner. I think she's. I I would need like a few years maybe. <laughs> Since 2016, over a hundred free embroidery training programs have been launched in 173 villages across the Horton Right Wing Middle Banner, benefiting over 21,000 people. The products are sold across China and gains shared by embroiders. So I think many times we go into a tourist place and we don't really realize what's behind it. Now you see. Who makes these things? And where do they make it? What do you think that might be used for? Fit, you know, put my phone in? Of course. Perfect. And most of these are floral designs. Mm -hmm. It's the local style. Mm. Like, they tend to design stuff that really reflect their real life. It's about mm. flowers right. and nature. Nature. I think that's the whole thing, you know. It's nice on you. Pretty good. Right, right. Hong Kong Over the past decade, 1.57 million impoverished residents in Inner Mongolia were lifted out of poverty. The per capita GDP of the region increased from 42,000 yuan in 2012 to 85,000 yuan in 2021. Towards the end of our trip in Inner Mongolia. So, what would you miss about it? I will miss the people, nature, culture, and harmony. For me, everything. I would love to come again and show you guys more. You know, a lot of people have heard about Inner Mongolia, but you really must come to this part of China to experience it for yourself. Welcome to Inner Mongolia!